Okay, let's get started. Um, just a real answer, course evaluation, and also meter. This is where we are at right now. We have uh, 25 evaluation scene. We want to get the bonus points. We need uh, 15 more. Next week, we're going to have the CTF here. So everyone has to be here in person to do the CTF. Uh, there will be no room sessions uh, that day. Okay, so let's talk about how to bypass uh, calories there, uh, which is a standard protection we have right now for all our software. Uh, we already discussed this Monday that um, if we guess why, one byte at a time. So technically, we only need to guess uh, 768 times to um, find the correct uh, calorie there. So today, we are going to do that. So before we do that, let me remind you what the target program looks like. So we have the main function. You know, target program. The target program has a big wire loop, so it keeps doing the same thing. Uh, it will first uh, fork itself. So after it forks itself, there will be the original parent process, which is already running, and another child process. So this branch here checks if this is the uh, child process or parent process. If it's a child process, it will print out the child process uh, process ID, which we don't really need just to show that's a child process. And then the child process will call the valve function. If the valve function returns successfully, uh, the child process will uh, print out IP to the full and then exit. The parent process will actually uh, wait the child process after it print out its uh, PID. It will just call wait PID system call to wait for the child process to exit. So if the child process doesn't exit, the parent process will just uh, be blocked at here. So in the child process, the valve function it also has a loop. Uh, what the loop does is look for a temp file called a temp exploit and read that temp file to its local buffer. And that is where the buffer overflow may happen. There's a local buffer for the 40 bytes in C. And uh, however, um, the child process will do a memory copy or F read, F read of 70 bytes. So that is bigger than 40 bytes. And that will overflow. Uh, the stack of the Volfu. So, however, this program is protected in stack calorie. So, if you try to overflow here uh, without knowing the correct calorie, what will happen is the child process will print out uh, stack smashing detected uh, terminate. And after that, the the parent process we create a new pro new child process. That how it, that is how it works. The new process, the parent process, uh, they all will have the same calorie, even though they are created at different time, because the child is just an exact same copy of the parent. Okay. So what we are going to do is we are going to uh, hack this program. We are going to uh, guess where the calorie is. So what is the query is? Let's say, so to do this one, there is a 30, 32 version and 64 bit version. Basically, they're the same thing. Uh, the only difference is the 32 bit version, the query is four bytes, and the first byte is zero. The 64 bit uh, is eight bytes, the first byte is zero. So which means the 30, 64 bit, you need to guess um, several hundred more times. Uh, like uh, 1024 times to guarantee to get that. 
Okay, so there is a tool I want to introduce you. I forgot to introduce you guys the tool. Um, and you may need this in the exam next week. This, well, without the tool, you can still find all those information, but this tool will make things a little bit easier. It's this check set um, tool. So if you do check set, uh, it will tell you how to use it. So basically, it tells you what kind of protections the binary you are going to hack already have. For example, when I do this, when I do check sec on this bypass 32, you can see uh, stack canary is, we found it, there is canary. Um, long executable stack is disabled, which means you can put share code on stack. It could be uh, environment variable like that. So in your exam, you probably want to use this tool to quickly check what kind of battery you are dealing with there. Uh, if, if you find out the stack is not executable, you probably need to, you need to think, we, we cannot inject the share code in environment variable or any, or any uh, stack regions. If there is no category, this will be maybe a little bit easier. So this is a simple tool. Technically, with all this tool, you can still find all those information. You develop a program, you uh, read the disassembly, you can still find out, okay? So, as you can see here, this program, our goal here is to get the flag. The flag is still uh, in this folder for flag. And this program is still a set UID program. So what we can do is we can put the share code uh, on stack. So let's do that first. So we talk about how to, Let's do that first. Let me copy that share code to the stack first. No. Um, that. I think I have a draft here somewhere. Oh yeah. Okay, we put the share code on stack. Then let's find out where our share code is. Our share code is at this address. Let's, let's make a copy of this. We were use this later. Okay, let's say, um, for this one, I want to have two terminals. So I will use uh, Tmax here. The left hand side, we can run the vulnerable program. As you can see, when the program runs, it's, so what's happening here is when we run this program, the parent, the parent process, the parent process is running and the parent process is out of here. It print out parent PID, then you get a block there because it's waiting for the child. The child is, the child print out uh, child PID then you get into Bofu, which is also a big loop, okay? So this loop is looking for the temp file, which we don't have yet. Since we don't have the temp file, it will keep looping here. Uh, that's why we, we're not, basically we're not moving forward. We're not doing anything right now. So if we go to the next terminal, then we create, let's say we create that local file, let's say two, Uh, exploit. So what will happen when we do this? We're going to create that, we're going to create the file from exploit, right? So the child will be able to 
the child process will be able to read that file and do the F read, but that F read will not be able to overwrite anything. So the program, the child process will just, uh, this function will just, uh, uh, after that, it will actually remove that file and just return. So after we return, the child will print out IPD the full, then exit. Then the, the parent will create a new child. That's it, right? So that's what we're, so when we do this on the second terminal, it, that's what will happen. We will say the parent print out its PID again, it's 098, because it's now creating new P, uh, parent process, but the child process will be a new one, so it will have a new PID. Okay, that's what happens. So when we put that there, a new child is created with a new PID. And before that, uh, the child will print out, I read two bytes, and the, what is the value of the guest character is there, which we don't put, put there, so it's actually zero. So I pity the fool. So if we put many, many bytes there. What will happen is we are going to overwrite the program. We are going to overwrite the buffer of the child, right? So in that case, this line of code, the F3, will try to overwrite the stack of this waffle, and that will be detected by the stack cookie mechanism. So the child will print out stack smash and detect it, something like that. Then the child will uh, exit. Then the parent will create a new child, okay? So let's see that. We do this, see? When we put a lot of uh, garbage there, more than 40 bytes, then the child will read 70 bytes and uh, the child believes this is the canary we are guessing, 32, with, well, 32 is a hex of two right then the child will print out a stack smash and detect it terminate it uh something like this okay but note that here the we never touch this terminal so the parent process always running there we never stop the parent process if we stop that create a new one then you will have a new canary okay so we do not do that we only uh, uh, on this side so next we are going to, I, will, uh, I have some script to uh, try to hack this. Uh, I'm not going to share the script with you. It's only 10 lines, something like that. Uh, but uh, you can see in the screen. So in your homework, you can, if you want, you can type that. But uh, you can also code your own script. Um, your script can be even smarter than mine, okay? So let's see what we have here. Okay, this is basically uh, my uh, script to generate exploit. So the exploit in this case, you can say, we're going to generate hundreds of exploit to try which one works, right? So this is my code it's, uh, script to generate that uh, exploit. So basically, uh, this is a Python script. So there's a main function. In that main function, I have one loop. Um, so the so the loop goes, the variable C1 goes to from zero to 25. Then it first check if this temp exploit file exists. If it exists, it will just wait, wait for the parent to, to delete that. Because the parent process will delete that, right? So after that, um, if it is now there, then we will create this temp exploit file. After that, it will just write those things. Uh, that's our exploit. Why we are writing those? Uh, because this will be what the stack looks like. 
uh, if you do some reverse engineering, you realize the stack will look like this. First, we have a buffer. The buffer is actually at EBP minus 20, no, EBP minus 35. That's where the buffer is. And you can also find out the canary is at EBP minus C, uh, which means which means there is actually no bound, there is no other paddings before the buffer and the canary because this one is um, EBP minus fifty two. This one is um, EBP minus twelve, and the, the size of this is forty bytes. Okay, so which means to override canary, we need to 40 bytes of garbage here first. After that, we know the first, the lowest byte of the canary is zero. We already we know that it's always in our system. Then we need, only need to get three bytes. Uh, after that, uh, from the canary to save the EBP, that's how many? 12 bytes. From here to here is 12 bytes. So the between them, because this thing is four bytes. So between them, we have four, eight bytes. So eight bytes in between here, another four bytes of saved EVP. So if we want to overwrite the return address, we actually another 20 bytes, 12 bytes of garbage, right? Okay, so that's how we are going to, and the return address, we're going to use the share code address anyway. Okay. So let's copy our, So let's copy this whole thing to our server. I'm going to use just, uh, oh, I need to stop. Oh, no, it's okay. I'm going to create a lot of file. Uh, let's say, the quit temp. Oh, by the way, why we are using temp? Because you don't have right permission to that uh, folder. Okay, you, have, you only have right permission, execution permission in the temp folder. So here, let's say we have a uh, exploit generation. Um, this, is, this is our script. We touch that. We are going to write this one here. OK, so that's why you can see here, we have first, we have 40 bytes of garbage. Then the first byte is 0. Then after that, we are going to keep guessing from zero to 255. That makes sense. So we are going to send out the first time when we do this, we are going to send out 42 bytes. 40 bytes of garbage, one byte of zero, another byte is what we are actually guessing. So where are we? So let me make this a little bit smaller. So now, oh, that fire is not, when we do that, that fire is not executable, right? So this file right now is not executable. That's why we need to add the executable permission to it. Change mode plus X. Now that file is executable. So now we just need to execute this file. Okay, so after we execute this, we're going to say a lot of print call like this. Okay, and uh, most of them should be sent, mentioned, detected. One of them will show IP to the pool. That is the one we guess the uh, one by correct, right? So we're going to run this. When you say IP to the pool, uh, let me know. We start running. I don't know what the canary is, like same as you. I don't know what it is. We are actually guessing. So we are, so the first byte is zero, the most, the least efficient byte is zero, and the second one is, so right now we are at the 14, 14, 14, 20, actually, yeah. So those are the main numbers. So if we're lucky, if those numbers are small, it will be faster. Uh, worst case, we will guess 255, 56 times. So when we say that IP to the full, then we stop the right-hand side. 
And then we try to, oh, we got it. Oh, we're lucky this time. See, here. So when the can, then when the canary we get 2D, it brings out IP to the full, which means the canary is 2D. That byte is 2D. So we go back to, so we stop this uh, right hand. Then we go back here. We can change this. Like I said, uh, my, why cannot change that? Uh, my exploit is not fully automated. Okay, uh, you can write one to make it fully automated. So my exploit here, then what are we doing? The first byte is zero, zero. The second byte is 2D here. So I make this 2D. So now, then we run this program again. So we are guessing the third bytes, the third byte. And we're still guessing from zero to 255, right? Okay, so we stop this one. We save it, and uh, we never touch this side. This server is still running. We run this program again. We start guessing again. See, so this time we're guessing three bytes, third bytes, third bytes, and the our memory we are three bytes. Okay, so we were we were lucky before. It's a small number, two D. Any questions so far? It is kind of slow here because in the program, I have several uh, sleep there because we are basically centralizing using a file system and the write to the file system is kind of slow. So I have like a several sleep there for one second. Uh, for other programs, it doesn't have to be this slow. Sometimes it can be much quicker. So we guessed a half of it right now. 7F is half of it. Did we miss it? Did anyone see it? No? Okay. Not lucky this time. Over A, going to this E soon. Hmm, that's a big number. Did we miss it? Interesting. Okay, it's a big number. What's that? D, D zero, okay, that's a big number. Okay, so now we go back here, then we 
Now the third byte is D0. Yeah, that's D0. Keep guessing the last byte. So in this example, we are actually exploiting the child process, not the parent process. The child process is created by the fork system call. And you can see um, the fork system call, whatever created by the fork system call, will inherit the parent uh, privilege. But in if you use uh, exe CVE, it will not. Right? So, Another big number. I hope D0 is correct, right? Did I mistype? It's D0, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I got it. That's a big number. We're really unlucky today. Say D. Okay. Now we got all of it. Now we can. Okay. So this one would be say say D here. This one. Okay. So now we have the clarity. So we don't need to guess anymore. So we remove this part. Then, okay, let's go back to our slides. We know what this value is. We only need a 12 bytes of garbage. Then the share code ends with, right? So we create a two, 12 bytes of garbage. 12, then put the Share code address there, which is we find out this one. Okay, it's DCA0. We have a huge pan, so we maybe add a little bit there as to maybe uh, DB, DC. So it's DCA0. DC I change it to DD, DCDD, okay, something like that. That's, that's 
Yeah, that's just uh, 100 bytes, 100 something. No, no, not, not even 100. So that should be good. So we do FF, we do FF. So this will be our final exploit here. We only need to send it out once actually, but uh, whatever. We keep using this script to send out uh, many times. Okay, so now when we run this, um, the child process is supposed to give us a flag. Um, because we're keep writing, it's supposed to give you all uh, many flags actually. See, it works. Now we get the flag because we're writing it many times. That's why we're getting a lot of uh, output like this. Okay, this is how we can get the curves. So, numerics three bytes or seven bytes using the same approach. We will be able to bypass uh, this protection. Cool. Uh, any questions? Okay, I don't really have one many more to discuss today. So this will be the last task before the midterm. Uh, next week will be midterm, two sessions of CDF. Then after that, we have a spring break. So then we will come back for uh, more topics. So the first half of the class will move a little bit slowly. Second half, um, we're talking about many topics. The first half, we're basically just talking about the stack-based buffer workflow and protections or bypassing. After we come back, we're talking about how to develop share code, how to do a format screen vulnerability, how to do uh, internal oriented programming, how to do cache based attack. Um, I think those are the, oh, we also have key based attack. So it's more like uh, kind of like uh, one week we have one topic and we will move a little bit faster. To prepare for the meter, uh, what you need to do is go to your homework. Make sure you understand every challenge in your homework. If you understand every instruction there, whatever every instruction does, um, you can solve the homework by yourself. Then um, there's not much to worry about in your uh, for the for the meetup. Okay, I'm not going to make something you have never seen before. Some, something super difficult to for you to solve in your midterm and only give you 45 minutes. Well, we're going to probably we're going to do uh, four challenges. So it's kind of like 45 minutes each. For some of those, you could finish really quick. Maybe 50 minutes, you can finish one. Then you can spend the rest of time on the other one. So my experience is from previous classes is someone can really finish this in 20 minutes. Then they are ready to go. Then if you struggle there, if you're struggling in the first 20 minutes, you don't know what's going on, then probably you cannot solve it in 90 minutes anyway, right? So to uh, anyway, everything will be uh, open book. You can use Google. You can check your homework. You can check the uh, lecture notes. You can copy the share code on the lecture notes, everything like that. The only thing you cannot do is talk with each other or talk to anyone. You cannot get help. That's it. So I will have several people um, Come here to talk to them. Uh, so, uh, so don't cheat. Good. Yeah. This will not go to the midterm because this one you cannot determine the time, right? But this will be your homework. Yeah. Yes. So even during the spring break, we may have homework here. Yeah, so every Wednesday homework here. Yeah, even it's a spring break. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is fun, right? So <laughs> okay, cool. That's it for today. So the online folks, remember you have to be here in person for the exam, okay? For the CTF. Can you guys hear me? I do not get any feedback today. Okay, good. Then 
see you guys next week. Probably for some of you, it will be the first time I see you in person. Okay, see you.